Ipswich Town are the first team in over a decade to win back-to-back -back promotions from League One to the Championship. Today, we're going to be discussing the tactics behind Kieran McKenna's remarkable rise with Ipswich Town to the Premier League. Since his appointment as manager, Kieran McKenna's picked up more points than any manager in the top four leagues, 16 more points than Pep Guardiola. McKenna has combined an aggressive press with super attacking play and a lot of interchange in possession to lead Ipswich to glory. Today, we're going to be diving into all of that and find the secrets behind this key, key rise of a sleeping giant in European football. I'm Statman Dave. Make sure to like the video, subscribe if you're new. Anyway, let's get this party started. So what's interesting about Ipswich Town? Well, first up, let's talk about their build-up and the use of target men in build-up. A target man is a traditional old-school English thing. A big man up front that you're going to play long balls to to either get flick-ons or to bring players into the final third. But Ipswich are using them in a really smart way in build-up. In terms of build-up attacks in the championship, Ipswich are ranked 7th this season, which is pretty good. They have got the ability to play through pressure, with their back kind of four and their two defensive midfielders they can overload the opposition's press and play through and get to their attacking midfielders to then create in the final third but what i like about ipswich sometimes is they like to go direct in terms of direct attacks in the championships this season they are the third fastest side and they do that by using a target man on the right wing and a target man on the left wing the target man on the left wing is the nominal striker either Kiefer moore or george hurst will move wide they'll basically create an overload on the opposition from a superiorative perspective, a big target man against a small technical fullback, usually going to see long balls, uh, you know, taken by Ipswich Town in that final third. And on the right hand side, Wes Burns holds that width, but also he's a bit underrated in the air. He doesn't look the tallest, but he's very good at winning those long balls. This also forces another tactical situation that creates a good superiority for Kieran McKenna's Ipswich. That's two technical players in the two striking positions the nominal 10 in Connor Chaplin, and of course, uh, Amari Hutchinson, a player on loan for Chelsea, who's very technical and good on the ball. So not only have Ipswich got a box in midfield that we know works so well in build-up, you know, think of the likes of Brighton or Aston Villa um, or even by Leverkusen examples that use boxes in that central area to overload the opposition. But they've got two out balls on either side where they can simply go long from. And that comes at times when Ipswich are playing through from the left-sided centre-back. Burgess has got a good ability when hitting long passes. In fact, hits frequently that ball out wide to the left wing for George Hurst to win the knockdown. Alternatively, he'll switch the play out wide to Wes Burns. From these situations, it creates a bit of a problem for the opposition because they're squeezing high, they're playing up the pitch. Usually their midfield will be committed. So it allows Ipswich to get the ball and create faux counter-attacks in these areas, either by uh, Hurst knocking the ball down to an attacking midfielder for them then to recycle play and build in the final third, or going direct and looking for a flick on for someone like Hutchinson or Chaplin to run through and have a direct effort on goal. But that use of a target man and that ability to speed up their attack is a really modern thing and something that Kieran McKenna has really worked on with Ipswich. It worked in League One, it worked in the Championship and I tell you what, it's going to work in the Premier League. Think about the Premier League fullbacks at the moment. Usually you play a winger that's going to get into the final third and cross for you or you play a player that's going to move into the midfield line. Usually technical players. You know, forget the Arsenal's and Man City's, the top top of the Premier League. The rest of the teams, you're thinking a George Hurst or a Wes Burns, could really dominate them airily, allowing Ipswich to get into the final third and look to create those opportunities in those zones. Alternatively, if Ipswich are building a little bit slower or they've got through the thirds, uh, let's say when the strikers move back to more of a traditional striking position uh, and the space is opened up on the flank, you'll see Leif Davis fly into the final third um, and Burgess hit him with a similar ball in behind the defence. We saw that in the game against Swansea City, a direct ball to Davis into the final third, a cutback for Chaplin, Ipswich grabbed a really, really good goal, playing through the thirds with real direct speed. A real part of Kieran McKenna's side, making them a very interesting team. So moving on to the second thing. Why are Ipswich Town interesting? Well, the use of the 3-2-5. 
in the final third and also in build-up. That's not something that we tend to not see in European football, but it's quite nice with how the shape is, is created by the left-back pushing forward, as we've just mentioned in Leif Davis. The balance is created by Tuinzebi in the base of the defence. So what you'll see Tuinzebi do, he'll operate more as an inverted fullback. If you want to understand what an inverted fullback is, we made a cracking video on the concept created by the one and only Johan Cruyff. But Tuinzebi basically operates as a third centre-back in possession allow Zipswich to create a ba base and play through the opposition's pressure. Into midfield, there's also balance that's kept by the two uh, defensive midfielders. One of them operates as a number six, the other one operates more of a number eight. Morsey's that player that Ipswich used to kind of bounce through, especially on the right-hand side, to break the lines and play through. His ability to play forward is really nice, and his connection with the attacking midfield line is arguably perfect for a possession-based team. A key defensive player who won Ipswich Town's Player of the Season Season this year and expect him to adapt to the Premier League. In terms of Luongo as well, he operates in more of a halfback role, but more of a halfback where we're talking a Tony Cruz level, a player that's not dropping back into the middle of the defence, but a player that's kind of sitting to where you'd usually expect your left back to be. Think Tony Cruz, Real Madrid. Marcelo would push on and operate as a winger in the final third, forcing Cristiano Ronaldo inside. And what you'd see Tony Cruz do is get on the ball behind him and you'd look to dictate the play in that area. What only that means is you've got to, you know, you'd have to press from midfield, which creates opportunities for a number 10 to drop in and get on the ball and turn and play forward. Or alternatively, you're given possession. And frequently at times, you'll see Ipswich dominate that left-hand side of the opposition with a real overload there, including Burgess in this diamond, the nominal um, left winger who moves inside. We've got Hutchinson as in this example, Davis holding the width, and of course, we've got the player on the ball in long go. That creates a situation where you've got this diamond Diamond. Think either Atalanta under Gasparini or Thiago Motta's Bologna, where they create these wide diamonds to overload the opposition and then they'll switch to play, marrying concepts of positional football with relationalism. Kind of what I like to see at the moment in European football. So that left-hand side will overload the opposition. They'll get forward. They'll create chances. The number 10s are very key in picking up little pockets of space and getting on the ball. And both players in those areas create a lot of problems. But in terms of Davis, he is more of a old-school attacking fullback. Think someone like an Andy Robinson for Liverpool, who provide width from the final third as the player ahead of him. You know, Sadio Mane would move inside. Davis does that job really well. And quite frankly, he's probably one of the most creative players in the English game at the moment. He created 125 chances in the championship this season. That's more than any player managed in the championship in the last five seasons. He's a player that's devastating when the ball gets into the final third. Not only is he good from set pieces, his delivery, especially from the right-hand side, his in-swingers to the near post, create a lot of goals for Ipswich, but his delivery from free kicks is also very good. And from open play, he's got a variety of deliveries. And in terms of Ipswich from this left-hand side, what they like to do when they get into the final third Third is hang the ball up. So let's say Ipswich have made it into the final third. They progress the play and Davis is here on the left-hand side. We see this over and over again. Because of the positioning of Amari Hutchinson, pulling the opposition inside, it creates massive space for the overlap on that flank. Nominal width, creating good potential in the final third to create good goal scoring opportunities and Ipswich have got a lot of methodology in the final third but the two main ones that we've seen over and over again is either crosses to the back post to hit the two target players that of course being Wes Burns or George Hurst or even Kiefer Moore overloading that zone or alternatively what you'll see Leif Davis do is drop the ball back to the edge of the box this creates a big problem for the opposition because if they collapse with the two forwards on the back stick you know your Burns and your Hurst it creates massive space for for Connor Chaplin to arrive late. And that combination has created a lot of goals for Ipswich this season. In terms of assister to goal scorer in the championship, that has been a combination that's happened seven times. Davis assisting Connor Chaplin. And that move where the forwards clear out the defensive line, creates space on the edge of the box, is going to be devastating in the Premier League. Amari Hutchinson as well is also a danger for the little cutback or a pass into his feet that we also do see Davis do. He's a player that's got lots of different weapons in his locker in terms of crossing. Got a bit of pace as well, so we can also look for those long balls getting behind the defence, like we saw against Swansea City. A very direct goal coming from Cameron Burgess at the back, a long ball over the top for Davis to get in behind the opposition defence, work that cutback for Connor Chaplin to fire the ball home. And that's something that Ipswich have got in abundance. They can score from so many different angles. You take this season, they scored 90 goals in the championship, but their top scorer, Connor Chaplin, only scored 13 goals, 
really shows that ability to score from different areas. They're also dangerous from set pieces with only Cardiff City scoring more goals from dead ball situations than Ipswich. There's so many different ways that Ipswich can score. And the use of the, the two wide players, as you mentioned previously, in Burns and Davies to kind of create those crossing situations, the big way they create chances, but also interplay in between the lines from the two number 10s. Both 10s are very good at carrying the ball, directly dribbling at the opposition to then again get shots away, alternatively combining with one twos and then maybe firing a winger in behind for them to get shots away. There's so many areas that Kieran McKenna's created to create this kind of five-man threat across the opposition's back line. They're such a difficult, difficult team to defend against and we saw that in Wes Burns' goal of the season, this overload-underload concept where Ipswich draw Coventry over with short passes around the back, quickly switch the play to the left for Leif Davis to carry into Coventry's half. Davis then picks out Burns with another switch of players able to cut inside and pick out the top corner with a ridiculous finish with the outside of his boot. A super, super goal that really highlights the quality of Kieran McKenna's tactics. Onto the defensive side of Ipswich game, they defend in a 4-2-3-1, a narrow 4-2-3-1 similar to Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. Why this 4-2-3-1 works to great effect, not only is the fullback being super aggressive when the ball goes down the flank, the shape is shifting over and it's really compact from front to back, allowing Ipswich to overload that flank with bodies, create situations where they can press um, and win the ball in those attacking areas. Not only does that mean that they're really difficult to play through and defend against, but they can turn the ball back in this attacking midfield line and then directly attack, like we saw in the goal against Huddersfield Town on the final day of the season. Hutchinson stealing the ball in the final third, a little switch of play through the attacking midfield line and Wes Burns to fire into the near post to give Ipswich the first goal in the game that sent them to the Premier League for the first time in 22 years. And when you look at the statistics on the opt analyst, Ipswich have got the most high turnovers in the championship. And on Y Scout, they're ranked second for PPDA, which shows their ability to press the squeeze and win the ball back in the right areas, but also nullify their opponents playing out from the back. So the big question is, will this all translate to the Premier League and will Ipswich stay up? I think they can. Kieran McKenna's built a really good game model at Ipswich and it allows them to play in all thirds of the game in all stages of the game to a really high level. It reminds me a lot of Bournemouth when they came up from League 2 to League 1 to the Championship to the Premier League where they kept a core group of players together that could play good possession football and allow them to play in different ways against different opposition. Kieran McKenna's got that pragmatism that a lot of managers are lacking in the Premier League right now that are stuck on their own ideas. And I think when you build it out Ipswich's team is kind of ready for that next stage. One of the big things they need to do is re-sign their loan players. Amari Hutchinson has been the standout player for Ipswich in the back end of the season. 10 goals and 5 assists in the championship this season. His ability to defend in a left wing position but then move into a playmaking uh, position as a number 10 allows Ipswich's shape to fully develop. Re-signing him is going to be vitally important but there are already reports that he wants to rejoin Ipswich Town. On top of that, re-signing Sarmiento from Brighton would add good depth and creativity in those wide areas, allowing them to have a number of players that can play against certain teams, allowing them to be tactically different. You know, we could see Sarmiento play on the left wing, we could see Hutchins starting on the, the right-hand side, if McKenna wants to go for more of an inverted winger versus a traditional one. But also moving to players from Premier League sides, the Ipswich Town should target Emad Diallo is a big one. If Manchester United aren't going to use him in the first team, Emad Diallo should go and play under McKenna. Not only is he left foot Footed. Kieran McKenna does like his attackers to be left-footed. Hutchinson's left-footed. Chaplin's left-footed. Of course, Ahmad Diallo is left-footed. But it's in a team that plays expansive football that's going to create chances and 1v1s for their wingers. Something that Ahmad Diallo did really well when he was on loan at Sunderland. That step up to the Premier League not only would be good for Ipswich, but it'd also be great for Manchester United. I think in terms of the rest of the team, I think depth and maybe Premier League quality is needed in some areas. I think adding depth at centre-back could be a good thing for Ipswich Town. Signing someone that could play in Wolfenden's position, maybe Premier League uh, ready or maybe more of a young player to challenge him from that spot could be good. I think Cameron Burgess could step up to life in the Premier League. Into midfield, Captain Morsey uh, is someone that, again, does a great job within this tactical system. Has he got the ability to play in the Premier League? Yes. Could he play all 38 games at high intensity? Maybe no. So signing a backup that can allow him to sit out some games
James could be a really good option for Ipswich Town. In terms of Longo, getting someone that's tactically very, you know, aware of sitting in that left half position will be important. Again, adding strength and depth to defence and midfield. And I think in the forward line is probably the last position that Ipswich really need to look at. Uh, George Hurst did a really good job in the Championship. Kiefer Moore was signed um, as a, a loan option. And he could be someone that's brought in. In terms of what they're looking for, it's a target man type forward. But Ipswich Town may already have a star on their hands in Ali El Hamadi, a player that came on my radar for having great numbers in League Two. If you look at his expected goals plus his expected assists over the last season, it's at 0.97. That is truly elite numbers. That's up there with Mohamed Salah, Erling Haaland in the Premier League this season. But also, if you look at the last 12 months, his goals plus assists per 90, it's 0.84. All these numbers to me suggest that this player could explode in the Premier League. And Ipswich Town won't have to go into the market, but in fact, they've got two strikers that could do a good job at the Premier League level. In terms of Ipswich overall, where I see they're going, I think tactically they've got a good structure, they've got a good shape, they need to keep hold of their stars at the moment, but also grow and bring some more players in on loan. And then I think they'll be a very, very good Premier League side. I could easily see them finishing around mid-table. I think there's a lot of quality within the squad. I think the tactical side of Kieran McKenna is brilliant. In terms of things that I heard whilst McKenna was at the club, the plans against PSG, the plans against Chelsea and Arsenal and Manchester United frequently punched above their way under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer came from Kieran McKenna. He's a thinker, he's a tactician and he will do well in the Premier League. I think Ipswich Town could finish around 13th, 12th or even 11th in the Premier League next season, which would have been an incredible, incredible achievement considering their budget. Their budget in the Championship this season was around 13th, 14th in the division and for them to finish second is an incredible job that the club has done to basically punch massively above their weight and get back to the Premier League for the first time in 22 years. But anyway, guys, get into the comments below. What have you made of Kieran McKenna's Ipswich Town and do you think they can stay up next season? I've been Statman Dave. Subscribe if you're new. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?